Hello, comrades, and welcome back to Ushanka Show. Здравствуйте, дорогие товарищи. Вы слушаете программу Ushanka Show. This is comrade Sergei Sputnikov, a.k.a. John Wayne Cheeseburger. So today we're going to talk about free housing in the Soviet Union, or was it really free? I already talked about this topic several times before, and you probably should check out my older videos on this topic, so we will be up to speed for this video. Moving along, number four. Number four. So the next type of interesting housing we had in the Soviet Union called Gastinka, which you can translate as hotel type rooms, hotel time apartment. Um, so I also lived in that one, not for a long time, maybe four years or so, four or five years. So after we managed to uh, get out of the dorms, we got this Gastinka type apartment. So that's a very tiny apartment, pretty much looks like a hotel room. Uh, it's about maybe 12 to 18 square meters. So you're looking at uh, maybe 130, 160 square feet, one room, and then you have a tiny, tiny kitchen and very small bathroom. I mean, bathroom like the size of the the ones you have on a train, plus you have this really f weird looking uh, bathtub, which is like a sitting type, so it's really shallow. It's So that's the, another type of housing we had. And it was the actual name of that type of apartment, it's a Quartira Gastinchnova Tipa, but short was Gastinka, so it's apartment of ho hotel style apartment. I honestly, I can't tell you why they decided to build housing like that, but I lived in this nine story um, building that had about, I think, 16 apartments per floor, so times nine. So about close to 150 apartments, and every apartment was a one-room, single-room apartment. Uh, half of them had a bal balcony, were a little bit bigger. Ours were smaller, no balcony. But still, after living in a dorm, sharing a room with another family, to have your own tiny apartment was already amazing. Number five. Number five. Okay, so now we'll be talking about real apartments in the Soviet Union and uh, general uh, classification. It's unofficial, of course, uh, but it was three types. Stalinki, Khrushchevki, and Brezhnevki. So they pretty much named uh, during the periods when they were built. So during the Stalin regime, it was so-called Stalinki. Then, of course, Khrushchev, Khrushchevki, and later on, uh, Brezhnevki. So the housing during the Stalin era, so-called Stalinki, so that was built in 1930s until 1950s, uh, they were like the best housing you could get in the Soviet Union. They were well built. Uh, they had tall ceiling, like up to three meters. Uh, they had really thick outside walls. Um, so there was well built housing. So it had a good soundproofing. And they didn't build them taller than 12 floors, so there was not many apartments on each level. Uh, and of course, because it's 30s up to 50s, those houses kind of tend to locate in the center of the city, so that's the top best location. And of course, if there was building maybe, you know, 30s or 50s, in 80s and 90s, there'll be well-developed area with nice tree, tall trees, so the nice parks close to shopping close to subway so uh, stalinki kind of tends to, to be considered uh, the best housing available in the soviet union but of course now it's has outdated electrical outdated plumbing and stuff like that but in 80s if you move in into stalinka that's like really cool also stalin uh, style apartments were famous for his monumental look so they had a lot of architectural elements uh, some apartments uh, in Moscow, I mean, they look like giant monster castles. Of course, it took forever to build them. Um, they was built for nomenclatura for party leaders and such. So there was a uh, slow and uh, didn't take care of the needs of millions of Soviet people. And after Stalinki, we had Khrushchevki. So that's the housing that was uh, constructed 
Johnny uh, Nikita Khrushchev era. And I know a lot of people, especially my comrade Tank is the head uh, Khrushchev because he was a revisionist. He changed the course of the country. He betrayed the Marxist ideals and Stalinist ideals. But he treated Soviet people like people, not just like tool to build communism. Uh, so he wanted to fix uh, this desperate situation of his housing in the Soviet Union. So when Nikita Khrushchev came to power, he signed quite a few, as we say now, executive orders. And uh, some of them were about, um, we need to stop to build uh, a few, but really fancy housing. We need to build a lot affordable, cheap housing, affordable like for the government. Uh, so that was uh, the result. Uh, they designed this five-story high, no elevator, really basic, really small apartments that can be built super quickly. I I think you can put like an average-style Khrushchevka apartment building in, in about a month, two months, because uh, it was pretty much like if you bring parts from the factories and you just assemble it together. Uh, so you raise it in one month and then uh, inside work will take another month to, you know, paint, uh, finish walls, put a floor cover, install the windows. And they built a lot of these houses all over the Soviet Union. Millions of people finally got their own apartments. Um, so that's all because uh, Comrade Khrushchev decided uh, to push hard for this type of uh, quick and dirty housing. My uncle... Uh, Misha, so that's my mother's brother, uh, who was the artist. Uh, his f family lived in this Khrushchev apartment. It was a pretty small two-room apartment, uh, and it had a little tiny balcony, of course, then a kitchen and combined bathroom. We had this term combined, so when the toilet and the shower is in one room, it's combined. The better uh, would be have them separately. So that was kind of cool uh, that they had this apartment. But I said, it was built really cheaply, um, and some of them supposedly had a lifespan of 25 years, some better built were had 50 years. So now, of course, we're looking back, it's about time for them uh, to be taken down. Actually, in Moscow, there's a big uh, reconstruction project, and they take down uh, hundreds of Khrushchevka buildings and build new apartment buildings on that place. When uh, one day I'll run out of topics to talk about Soviet Union, I may come back to Khrushchevka apartments and we'll make more detailed videos looking at the layouts. There's a lot of cool uh, facts about this type of housing, but we need to move on. Then we have Brezhnev Kiewicz. You know, this is my time housing and the apartment that we purchased, a uh, three-room apartment in 1981, I believe. Uh, so that's considered Brezhnevka, but we never called them that way. It was just a panel housing because it was panels uh, that were assembled at the factory, and then they bring them on the construction site and just put together. So during the Brezhnev time, they continued this extensive housing um, projects, building a lot of affordable housing quickly. But of course, with years, they had a better technology, quite a few improvements. Uh, usually... Brezhnev era housing, there'll be nine story high or 16 story high buildings. Of course, they had elevators, uh, they had a trash collection system built in, which later was abandoned. But you know, you have this big uh, tube going through from the ninth floor all the way down, and on each floor, you have this lid you open up and you dump your trash, and all this trash uh, falls down. To the bottom where the person who takes care of the trash will pick it up and put it in a dumpster. So now, after we looked at all the types of housing in the Soviet Union, uh, how did uh, Soviet people 
qualify uh, to get an apartment. So for example, if you live in a dorm like my family did, or you live in a communal apartment, Kamunalka or Barrack, uh, there was actually the system how you could apply uh, in order to get an actual real apartment. So what had to be done, uh, you have to sign you know, specific application and request improvement of your housing conditions. That's official name. So you put yourself on a waiting list, uh, but they're going to check what is your current uh, housing condition. So for example, if you share an apartment with your parents and you got married, so you have a wife, maybe a kid, and you share a two-room apartment with your family, with your parents. So they calculate how many square meters each person gets. And if you have uh, less than like five square meter per person, which is about, you know, 50 square feet per person, then you qualify to apply for improving of your housing condition. So for example, if you're a single guy that lives with a, his uh, parents, for example, and they had a large two-room apartment, uh, there is no way you could improve your housing conditions because according to the math, you already have a good uh, condition, so you won't be able to apply and get yourself a one-room apartment. You have to get married, maybe have a kid, then you may qualify. And then, of course, waiting list, depending at your place of work, usually that's where you apply for improvement. And like in my family case, we had to wait 20 years, 2-0, 20 years in order to get a free apartment. So in early 80s, my family had this uh, interesting choice to make, or we could live in that Gastinka tiny um, apartment for 20 years and wait for the uh, two-room apartment to be given us uh, free of charge, or move the other direction and apply for so-called cooperative cooperative apartment where you have to pay money but you had to wait maybe two three years but we had to pay a lot of money and i covered uh, this topic extensively in my video soviet mortgage how my family struggled to buy an apartment so if you guys didn't watch that i i don't want to repeat myself again in this video so just go ahead and watch that video later I uh, explain in, in detail all our struggles. And I was trying to uh, find out about the prices for these cooperative apartments. The numbers are uh, vary, but depends, you know, what city, which republic. Uh, some people saying that average, of course, it depends on the size of apartment. Uh, they said that average cost uh, of the Soviet cooperative apartment was 250 rubles uh, per square meter or 23 rubles per square foot. And 23 rubles will get you about seven bottles of vodka. So you can transfer vodka into dollars and it turns out about $100 square foot. So pretty close to what United States used to have uh, when you build brand new home. Uh, it's about, now it's I think more like 150 to 200 ruble dollars per square foot. Uh, so one room apartment will be about 4,500 rubles. A two room apartment, and they're tiny. Uh, 7,500 rubles and three-room apartment 11,000 rubles. I think ours was bigger so uh, you're getting yourself in pretty much a Soviet mortgage like my family had to pay for 15 years 50 rubles uh, every month so when my mom was making 130 rubles a month 50 rubles were going towards uh, payment for the apartment plus utilities so now you're looking at the situation very similar to any you know uh, western society america england uh, so close to 30 percent of our income was going towards apartment but we did not have to wait 20 years to live in a good uh, living conditions to have a nice three-room apartment and you know i want to tell you something after i started uh, uh, running Ushanka show making videos i actually started uh, thinking and analyzing my life and my family life in the soviet union and I came to the realization, you always have to pay. It doesn't matter if it's a capitalist society or socialist society, you always have to pay. The difference is, in capitalist society, you pay with money. In socialist society, you pay with your time. So here, you can pay 
money and move in into an apartment or a house and then you have a mortgage and a horrible debt for 30 years, 20 years, whatever. In Soviet Union, you have to wait, so you pay with your time 20 years, some people say 15 years, in order to get so-called free apartment and you pay just really cheap rent. So you always have to pay, you just, or your money or your life. I mean, like your time of your life, because also it's also it's priceless, right? Well, if you made it all the way till the end of this long and boring videos, thank you so much. And I want to thank again everyone who supports my channel on Patreon.com. Thank you guys. It's greatly appreciated. Well, I truly hope you maybe learned something new today about housing in Soviet Union. And we'll talk to you soon. До свидания. Goodbye. Hey, by the way, the cool merch for cool comrades is available at the Ushanka store at the teespring.com. Just a friendly reminder that my book American Diaries is available on Amazon.com or shoot me an email if you would like to have a signed copy. Thank you! And if you love my channel and would like to show your support, please click on the link below this video and become the patron of the Ushanka show. For as little as one dollar, you can help us grow and create the new interesting videos about the life 